that, that was your passion was art, right? Design. Creating, yeah. design. Yeah, creating, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's worked out really well because I get to do that every day now. Yeah. So, and for myself, because as a designer, you're working for clients. So it's a lot of client work. So it's like, make this bigger, make this orange, mm -hmm. kind of like the start over. So like, it's a lot of that. So you lose your ego really quickly in terms of, in like the graphic design world. Yeah. Um, but with Generate right Cakes, it's been super fun because it's been a 10, 14 year branding exercise, basically. <laughs> yeah. Where we kind of got good. to grow it. And I do all the packaging and all the books and the photography and social media. So mm -hmm. it's been a really fun creative process mm -hmm. and that's kind of what's helped us I think um gain a lot of exposure a lot of exposure at the very beginning because Instagram was just becoming popular at the time and mm -hmm. my skill set was really um geared towards that and Jenna's craft was really photogenic so mm -hmm. it was kind of like a really good nice. mesh of everything going mm -hmm. on at the moment do you guys have a moment from the time when you guys were in the apartment together that like stands out of like maybe not stands out but a moment that you recall of Maybe, you know, you have a midterm next tomorrow and you're working on uh, your design and trying to figure it out. And you're both trying to build separate avenues in, 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 at that case. But yeah. you guys are living together in, in this world. Do you have a moment that stands out? Well, I just always remember being my big desktop computer and then Jenna's table where she worked on was behind me. Yeah. Um, but I remember carrying that huge, heavy wedding cake oh, yeah. down the stairs. That was so stressful. Oh gosh, yeah, that was so someone, big. Someone like in our hot apartment for some reason trusts me to do the four-year wedding. <laughs> okay, no clue. What let's I was talk doing. about. It. Let's talk about it. what yeah. happened. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember how they found me or whatever. Yeah, because this was before the kitchen. We were still doing it at my apartment yeah. then, so like it wasn't even um, wasn't legal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Yeah, so I, I was like, oh, I can do that. Sure, why not? And I, I did it. It was cute. Yeah, it was cute. Like, yeah, it was, it was okay. nice. I think it was like black and white. Yeah, and then, and like, and then, and then anemones. Anemones. And then, like, that's right. <laughs> anemones. anemones. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like I, and I had no idea. I, I literally to this day don't know how I didn't have a wedding cake like fall over on me because I didn't know. Wow. I'd done research and watched a couple of YouTube videos and stuff, but like there isn't. The amount of info on the internet as there is now like now you can google mm. anything and find out how to do anything back then mm. there really wasn't you have to like scour and i would watch certain videos and i watched a lot of cake boss and like try to pick up like little tips and tricks that way yeah um but there were some things that i would do that would just like take me so long and there was a way to do it like instantaneously and i was like oh i just wasted 10 hours on that <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what's an example what's an example uh like i used to do little 2D figures. I remember that like Buzz Lightyear cake or that Toy Story cake I made yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And like every, so I would print out the image, yeah. just like right there. I cut it with the exacto knife, and then I'd make font in each of the colors, and then cut out those little pieces and like piece them together, and then outline it in like um, black icing. And it took so long, but they were they're cute. And then I graduated into like hand painting. I so I just cut out the shape, and then I just hand paint it. Uh -huh. And like now so we just like do edible printing just mm -hmm. like that to make it affordable and like wow. we can mass produce it that way yeah but it's just yeah it used to take me forever but i love doing like i just get in the zone and i it's just like my therapy so i, I didn't mind spending that much time on things but mm -hmm. it's useful financially. to know yeah financially <laughs> no cost per hour dollars <laughs> until we opened the bakery yeah minus. it was like minus. minus yeah i didn't make a penny but so you were yeah so you were spending all the money on ingredients then. yeah oh yeah i would get money and then i feel like we're still spending all the money on ingredients 100 <laughs> percent. yeah it's so expensive yeah. yeah i'd get the money i'd get the money for the cakes i did that weekend i'd go shop for the next week and then it'll be gone <laughs> oh no yeah so it was it was hard and i it's hard valuing your time and your skill especially when you're starting out because you don't feel like you can charge that much and even to this day i don't feel like i can charge what it's worth for some of my custom cakes but i just want to do it so i'll take a hit mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um and you were doing them for free yeah essentially especially at the beginning i was like you want a cake you want a cake, you want a cake? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and okay. was that just because you enjoyed it or were yeah you... and i wanted to kind of build my portfolio okay. too like our face i think it's still on there like all my early cakes are still on facebook i think on facebook yeah yeah for sure Mm. Um, so I would just post them on there and then I start getting orders from friends and friends of friends and then people I didn't know. Mm. So that's when I kind of was like, okay, I think I'm onto something here. People like what I'm doing. And of course, like there was at times I'd charge even like $60 for a cake that now I would charge $500 for. Yeah. And then I like, oh, that's too much. I'll just make it myself. I'm like, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fine. 
<laughs> sporty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, no, it was definitely, but I loved it. And, and you have to build a portfolio. You can't expect to just charge like crazy right out of the gate when you have no training behind you. So mm. yeah, especially if when you, you're not going to school, that is your school. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, like Ash worked all those unpaid overtime hours. I <laughs> yeah. made all these cakes for free and then <laughs> yeah. it all worked out. <laughs> yeah. Ashley, what did you think when she was just grinding away at building cakes in your in your living room in your kitchen like what was going through your mind like i have my design where i'm going this way yeah uh like you're going to dentistry why, why are you building cakes like <laughs> no i don't know i was always really excited because yeah. i was in the wedding world with the magazine ah, so i yes. knew the vendors on the scene and i knew what was kind of in that world mm -hmm. so i was really excited that jenna was a bit more trend focused and kind of ahead of the the times and could really execute I did pull together a lot of photo shoots using vendors from the magazine, so I knew if I needed her to make a cake, I knew it was going to come the way that I had envisioned it to For be. Sure. So I was just yeah. really excited. I'm like, you also have to make macarons because <laughs> no one in the city makes them, and mm. they're so pretty, mm -hmm. and I love them. So yeah. um, I was excited. I was always cheering you on because I knew that yeah. she was always creative, but she never really had a chance to express that because she would go to like advertising art in our high school and then the teachers would be impressed with her. And then I was in the second term. I'm like, just like, wait till you see my sister. <laughs> <laughs> She's much better than I am. Aww. And I can't be second best. So I just yeah. stopped pursuing that. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Fair. So she found her creative. I found my medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of setting the, the macarons that you were talking about, yes. you guys started a trend almost like one in Winnipeg, but almost like worldwide <laughs> eventually. Mm -hmm. What was the idea behind going there? I think for... That, well, it's a funny story on how we got going with those because, um, like I said, I'm like, you have to put these on the, your menu when you open up. Uh -huh. Yeah. And she tried them once and they worked out great. She's like, yeah, no problem. Like, so I got easy. the. I don't know what everybody's talking about. Our first <laughs> menu was uh, hand handwritten. So I hired a calligrapher to do it. Yeah. And it was all ready to go. And it was like a week or two before opening. And Jenna calls me in a panic. She's like, we have to take macarons off the menu. Oh, like, no. Well, we can't. The menu's done. And she had tried and they just failed miserably like a million times again. Yeah. What happened? They're just a very finicky recipe. And that's like you hear about them being so hard to make. So when I first made them, like, oh, these are easy. Of course, let's put them on the menu. To be fair, you didn't use a thermometer. <laughs> you used a candy thermometer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't use a candy thermometer. I was like, oh, it Which looks like right. a main. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't working at all. And then I eventually figured it out like a couple of days before open and... Nothing yeah, else. and I think we started with like lemon friendship. and pistachio and salted caramel, but then we were like, let's just do fun flavors. Like, well, I can't believe no one has done like a cotton candy or yeah. Lucky Charms yeah. or like bubble gum. So we started doing yeah. all these fun flavors, and I think that's what really put us on the map because mm -hmm. no one had seen that or done that before. It was always raspberry, pistachio, vanilla, mm -hmm. lemon, salted caramel. Ones. Like it was the always basic. very yeah. basic. Yeah, yeah boring mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. delicious but basic and boring yeah mm -hmm. and we just had fun with it we love candy so we kind of infused that into everything we did and we got a lot of pushback mostly from chefs yeah um from like patisserie chefs what did they say <laughs> yeah just like that's not a macaron like uh, this fuzzy peach like like <laughs> sour sugar yeah. on it because we want to yeah. like, i don't know i always say too like that because we are self-taught and i'm a baker but in like now we hire actual <laughs> trained bakers sure. because it is such a skill and they're so good at it. Um, but I'm happy that I never went to culinary school because then I would be infused with those like, oh, you can't, like this is what it is. Yeah. Preconceived mm -hmm. notions of like what a macaron should be or what the flavor should be and what's like frowned upon and whatever. Like I didn't, I wasn't shaped in that way. So we just like mm -hmm. wanted to do what we wanted to do. Like I, 